What's going on, everyone? I hope you all had a great Tuesday. This is Mitch. I got y'all another update with the weather today. Um, hope you all had a great day. We're going to continue to break down the chances for tropical development. Things continue to increase. Things continue to grow in likelihood that something's going to develop next week. Uh, the European model, which is what I'm going to show first, so hold tight for me, um, it really showed, you know, it, it is it is past 200 hours out, but it showed development prior to 200 hours out. So we're starting to get a little bit closer to range on some of the models, but the European uh, showed an all-out hurricane getting into the western Gulf of Mexico. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to really break down all the models and what's the update, what's it looking like. So um, if you guys have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. I'm on a mission to hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Thank you for the incredible growth as I got over 4,000 subscribers overnight last night. So uh, not last night, but the night before last. So thank you all for the incredible support. Like the video if you like it. It helps my video get out there. And uh, y'all's support's always amazing. Like I said, um, I'm also a storm chaser. So if you're viewing this video for the first time or viewing my video for the first time, my uh, content for the first time, uh, I do storm chase too. So I put content with that. And I plan on ch storm chasing hurricanes this year. Um, so thank you all for watching and thank you all for tuning in and let's get going here. So we're going to start it off by looking at the European model. I've mentioned it in the last few videos. If you don't, have not watched those and you're just tuning in tonight for the first one, something called a CAG, a CAG, um, can form here. And basically, it's a lot of energy in Central America that sometimes can develop a spin to it and sometimes can get over the Eastern Pacific or either the Western Atlantic as in the Western Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico. And once it does, it gets over warmer waters and it has a chance to develop. It's basically, it's the same thing with the lower 48 here in the United States. Sometimes, even definitely this time of the year, and I'm going to talk about the potential too, actually for this to happen here in the next several days. Sometimes you get a cold front and the energy off the cold front stalls off the coast. And sometimes off a trailing edge of a cold front, you can get tropical development. Um, this is kind of the same thing. You got a bunch of energy kind of dwindling over Central America. And it's going to have a chance to explode or well, explode as in strengthen and, and materialize into a spin, a tropical wave depression storm. So watch this area and then it's going to dwindle into this area. So we're going to get into the days. We're going to get into Friday. We're going to get into the weekend. Notice you're not seeing much yet, but as you're getting into the we uh, weekend and to the second half of the weekend, notice right here. Take a look right here. And uh, as you're moving through here in time, you're getting some development over the salt southern Gulf of Mexico. And this really starts to develop early next week. I know you're looking at this saying, I don't see much of anything. But watch as I go a little bit further deeper in this run as you get midway next week. That's, that's a 998 millibar storm. So that's a pretty strong tropical storm right here in the, in the western Gulf of Mexico. And it's heading north towards Texas, Louisiana, and it's strengthening. Each time this number right here gets lower, that means the storm is strengthening. You notice when the number gets lower, the more, uh, how can I say it, the more good the storm looks on this graphic that you're looking at right now. So I get all the way to the end here, and you've got a 985 storm. That's not just a Category 1 hurricane. That's probably a Category 2 hurricane um, heading right towards Texas or Louisiana. We don't really know where it's heading, but and this is the last frame of the Euro 2. This is 10 days out. This is next Friday, not this Friday, next Friday. So um, it, it, it has it developing it, you know, at about 168, 178 hours out. So that's, that's around this time next week, which isn't too far out in the tropical, um, the tropics world, if you will. And it really, it, it, it isn't able to really move north much. And I'll tell you, there's not going to be much steering currents with this. And it's a combination of the pattern in place of the United States. You'll have a ridge of high pressure. You also have a cold front um, that's going to have a chance to dip over the eastern U.S. That's going to have the play on where this thing um, ends up traveling, what direction it ends up going. I, th I think that actually may prevent it from really affecting the southeast much. But I'm talking as if this is going to happen. We don't know if it's going to happen yet. All I know is the European, this is the most impressive European run so far. It's got an all-out hurricane towards the end of the run. Um, and it's strengthening, heading to the Gulf Coast. So uh, nothing to be concerned about, but it's there. Um, you look at the 10 millimeter wind speeds, 10 millimeter, 10 m wind speeds. So this is basically surface wind speeds. It's not wind gusts. It's not wind max gusts. It's just consistent wind speeds um, at the surface. 
we're going here in time. We're getting uh, watch this area right here. It's just normal normal wind patterns in the Gulf of Mexico at this point. But look at look at this spin right here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, getting off the coast of the Central America. It is strengthening, and notice it doesn't move much in like a day. It just kind of dwindles over one spot, but then it starts heading north. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, as I've mentioned many times. It, notice this looks like some kind of system, some kind of tropical system. Notice the yellow shade right here. That is wind speeds of 40 to 50 miles per hour consistently. But if I go a couple more frames, you start to see those reddish and brownish colors. And that's when you're starting to push um, 60 to uh, 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. Now, I know you're saying, well, it's not a hurricane unless it's 74 miles per hour. I'm not showing you max wind gust. They judge a hurricane off basically when they fly the airplanes over hurricanes in a nutshell. Whatever the highest wind speed they get, that's kind of what they go off of as far as the, as far as the strongest, uh, how strong the hurricane is in a nutshell. There's a little bit more that goes into it, but they typically take the highest reading they find consistently and they go off that but this is a big this is a hurricane this is a hurricane off the coast of um right off the coast of brownsville texas heading north um in june in mid-june which i is the time frame i've been mentioning for a while now that we need to watch right here you look at heights here and this is basically going to show troughing and ridges of high pressure i'm showing you this for a reason here it's so getting through here in time there is a trough that digs, and it actually might provide a cool down next week for the eastern U.S., um, a temporary cool off as we continue to go day after day of showers and storms here in the eastern U.S. I have I went from complaining about rain to not complaining about getting rain, but um, definitely uh, we're getting rain every day. I've gotten measurable rain for the last four or five days now, so I'm very happy about that. But as we're going through in time, you'll notice, look how the... Um, the isobars begin to tighten here, um, and that is the sign of pressure lowering, which is a sign of strengthening of some sort of some type of system. But you notice you have some kind of trough right here, dipping here. That might help to make this thing continue to go north or northwest into the western areas of the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, you got a ridge of high pressure that is going to prevent this, I think, from moving very quickly. So it's going to be, I think the weaker the storm is, if it is to develop, remember I'm speaking as if, if it is to develop, the more it is, um, how can I, I'm trying to find the right word for it, the more it's uh, persuaded more by currents, um, weather currents, whether that's a trough, whether that's a ridge of high pressure, the more it's uh, vulnerable to the movement, movement in the air, if you will. Um, the more stronger the hurricane is, the more it can hold its own, the more it can plow right into a ridge um, somewhat. The, you got to really have a really good... I don't know if you guys in the southeast remember Hurricane Florence. Hurricane Florence moved so slow because it was literally jammed in a ridge. It was surrounded mainly by a ridge of high pressure, and uh, it, it was trying to plow right into a ridge, and it was right over here, and it couldn't. So it got... All the way to the off the coast of North Carolina and it just slowed down and it did not know what to do because it wasn't getting pushed by any currents by any steering currents at all so it just kind of dwindled dwindled around the coast and went into South Carolina weekend and that was all she wrote so it was a weird storm I want to show you the GFS and I'm showing you just the United States lower 48 for a reason obviously you're gonna see our storm down here pop up at around 200 hours out um, and it, it's in the same position that the only, the only thing that's different is it comes in a good bit later. So it's past the 10 day range. So it's hard to take serious. It's a little bit slower, but it's in the same area as the European has it and it's strengthening, but it's more closer to a tropical storm strength heading towards Texas than a hurricane strength. I want to back this up a little bit right here. There's some kind of trough D. And there's a piece of energy, whether it's a cutoff low or low pressure, that gets off the coast of the southeast. This, around the tail end of this coming weekend to early next week, this has a chance to develop quickly into something, whether it's just a depression. But I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of spin up off the southeast coast from this. Um, there was a run actually on, I think it was the morning run of the GFS, that actually showed just an all out tropical storm developing off the southeast coast. So I would. This happens a lot, especially when these things get over. There's the Gulf Stream right here, which I'll show you right here. 
This is the Gulf Stream. Uh, body of very warm water surface temperatures wise. So storms like to get into this area and strengthen rapidly and kind of unexpectedly, some, unexpectedly sometimes. We had a tropical storm that did that last year. Um, it was around this time last year, but a little earlier in the year. It kind of got to right here, and then all of a sudden we had a 445 mile per hour tropical storm. Uh, I'm brain farting what tropical storm name that was, but um, uh, it was a it was a, it wasn't a big deal. It was, but it was a big time surprise. I tell you that. Um, so we have to watch this little area right here, the CMC model. Let's check this out. What we got going on here is uh, not much different than the last three days. It's the CMC. This the Canadian stands for the Canadian model, by the way, which doesn't honor a lot of respect but um it held its own last year in hurricane season i'll tell you that but it's been pretty steady with showing a low pressure get off the coast of central america here and develop into a tropical system it's been pretty consistent now it hasn't really closed in on closer of a basically it's just kind of jammed up in this time frame in the 200 to 240 hour out time frame it's not really getting any closer or any further out it's just staying in this time frame which to me, tells you it's just delaying it a lot. Um, so we kind of have to watch those trends there. Uh, just check out the, the moisture plume by the storm. So you can tell this is deep tropical moisture riding up. Like I said, regardless if we get tropical development, um, I really think we're going to get a huge surge of tropical moisture, even if we don't get a tropical system that develops in the Gulf of Mexico. So Basically, what I'm saying is if you're into Texas, Louisiana, or anywhere in the Gulf Coast, because this could affect anybody, um, if you're going to be dealing with a lot of rain, I think, next week, influenced by whatever maybe comes off the coast of Central America here. So we have to continue to watch that. I also want to show you this. As we're going through here in time here, there is going to be a trough that digs here, and this could potentially form its own dry air. So, well, push in dry air. So... We got to watch to see how this trough interacts with any tropical moisture that really gets going here because that's going to help aid. That's going to might maybe might be throw a little bit more dry air in the mix, but if it stays over here, this dry air from this trough is not going to bother anything. Um, but I want to show you the ensembles, the GEFS, as far as uh, the ensembles for cyclone development. Uh, notice uh, there is a big time area right here showing up off the coast of the Carolinas. Um, that's trying to pinpoint what I was talking about earlier about maybe this some stalled out energy gets off the coast and develops into a tropical system and then it picks up on the energy that comes into the Gulf of Mexico. So we have to watch out for that. Good old SpaghettiOs like to always show these. Notice, notice the energy that pops off right here off the coast of the Carolinas and then obviously it, just after 200 hours out you see, not even that far out, you see a bunch of circles popping up here and that's pinpointing where potential low pressures could be affecting the lower 48 so we'll continue to watch this um I, I know my videos aren't getting much more different because um we're still trying to figure out what's going to happen but i want to keep y'all updated on this and i i enjoy talking about the tropics too it's um i don't enjoy talking about as much as winter weather um but I, if i had to rate f between all three of the major weather things that happen between winter weather hurricane season and severe weather season i would probably put winter number one hurricane season number two and severe weather season number three only well, because severe weather season um it's not um it's something that i'm still learning a lot on and i continue to learn and uh, this past severe weather season was actually a big learning experience for me so uh, thank you all for obviously being patient with that but that's all i got guys thank you all for tuning in and uh don't forget if you got something i can pray about please put it in the comments um Take advantage of that. It gives other people an opportunity to reach out to you too. So um, thank you all for tuning in and y'all have a great night.